Hey guys, what's up? This is a British fanboy here, and phew, do I have a treat for you people. Indeed I do. I've got an afternoon of, well, pretty much nothing, frankly. So therefore, I'm going to do some playthrough on Prisoner of War. Now, I've just recently bought a PS2, like I've said, and I'm going to do some commentaries or maybe walkthroughs or even playthroughs of some of those old PS2 games that I absolutely loved. One of them was this one. I've just picked this up in Game Station and... Prisoner of War was a very bizarre game. Oh, Christ, these graphics fucking suck. Now, the graphics on Prisoner of War actually weren't very good for the time anyway, so looking at them now after playing... I was Heck, I was playing Crisis this morning. <laughs> and now I'm going back to this, you know. And, you know, playing Call of Duty Black Ops and stuff, which graphics are pretty nice, okay? I don't care what the people saying, oh, they're shit. Major pause there. <laughs> so, yeah, some stuff about this game. This came out in 2002 onto the original Xbox... PC and PlayStation 2, I think. Could be wrong about that, but I'm not too sure. And obviously, it's PlayStation 2, so it's in standard definition, this video. Oh, God. I can't believe I bought her Parg and I'm uploading videos in standard def. <laughs> I don't know. It was made by Codemasters, and it's basically just an escape game, you know. It's just They did make an actual The Great Escape game later on down the line. That was on late PS2, I think. But this game kind of advertised itself as being the game that's like The Great Escape, you know. And it was. It was a bloody good game, you know. It got really high reviews. But um, I don't think it did very well in terms of sales and stuff, actually. I don't think many people bought this game. Which is a shame, because it was one of those diamond in the rough games, really. Drop your weapon, American. <laughs> See? I don't even remember this stuff. Now, some something to mention about this game is that... You're pretty much the only American in existence in this game, okay? You play an American called Captain Lewis Stone, who, as you just saw, was shot down and has been captured. And your job is to escape from this POW camp. This is actually Starlog Luft 3, which might sound familiar. You know the name Starlog Luft? You do visit a lot of famous places. You visit Starlog Luft. Oh, no, this isn't Starlog Luft. No, you're in a temporary holding camp. You go to Starlog Luft later in the game. And, um... Later on, you also go to Colditz Castle, you know, a very infamous place, very infamous castle, which was a prisoner of war camp in the heart of Germany. And, um, I don't know if it's Germany now, wherever Colditz Castle was. I actually have no idea where Colditz Castle was. Hmm. But yeah, as you can see, you know, it's just, you do have to kind of obey the rules of the camp, so to speak. Like, right now, he's telling you, you can't attack guards, you can't have illegal contraband. Okay, you can't go near the fence. You have to turn up to a roll call every morning. If you don't turn up to the roll call, then the guards will be looking for you. And they will find you. Okay, the guards... I remember the guards were very smart. Oh, very funny rule. I hate it when people do that, you know. Rule number three is obey all the rules. Oh, fucking retard. You think they're smart, don't you? But no. You're not. You're not smart. And I remember that, you know, your time of day really matters, you know, you've got a clock and you remember, okay, it's roll call at 8 o'clock, I've got, I've got to be there, you know, and um, it's lunchtime at 12, okay, I can't go into that area at 12 because they've closed that gate so people can get to the dining hall and stuff like that, you know, you've really got to plan it out and stuff, and it's quite a believable interpretation of trying to escape from a POW camp, so to speak. The game's a bit linear in a way, but, um... In a way, it's a bit linear, but you can still kind of do what you want, you know, like, say if your objective is to break into a medicine cabinet and steal some medicine, for example, then you can do that in so many ways, you know, you can just hop over the fence and go for it, or you can set an alarm off somewhere else so the guards are looking for you, and then sneak in some other way, you can throw rocks to distract the guards and stuff, stuff which is fairly simple nowadays, but... You know, back then, you know, back in 2002, it was so original. No one had really seen this on a console. All right. Oh, see, I'm already being shouted at. What a douche. Oh, I don't like that. The control's all inverted. So when I push the analog stick left, it goes right. Oh, I don't like that. Let's fix that. The only problem with this PS2 is that the controller that came with it, the, um, what's it called? The start button is really crap. I've got to kind of, you know, push it really hard in. No homo. And... Please say I can fix the controls. There's no control option. That annoys me. Okay, I'll just have to get over it, I suppose. I'll get over it. See, so you've got a time skip option there to skip to a certain time and stuff. Oh, that's going to really annoy me. I'll get over it. At least the walking around is correct. Oh, yeah, see, look. Hiding place. Oh, yeah, a safe where you can put anything in there. You know, even illegal contraband and stuff. Contraband, you've got things like 
you got your currency, which is things like chocolate and branding and sort of not actual money. You go to your bunk to save. You can get crowbars. You can get boot polish to use as like kind of DIY camouflage stuff like that. You can get rocks and catapults and things. Such a cool game. All right, so my first objective: access that. Anything in there? Shove my kit bag in there. Turn to camp. And I'll save the game while I'm here. Now, awesome thing, I might have mentioned this in the last Call of Duty 4 commentary, but I actually got this for completely free, this PS2 console, because I traded in some games. But, uh, hey, you know, I got three other games, I got four games on PS2 now, actually, which is pretty much the same as I've got on PS3, actually, now. Huh. That's not good. But anyways, I've got four PS2 games now. I've got, um, oh, I can time skip now. Uh, I'll skip to afternoon free time because then I can talk to some of the guards and stuff like that. Not the guards, talk to some of the other prisoners. The very British prisoners, that's for sure. They're all very, very British indeed. They're so British, if they were to go meet the king, they would, you know, be polite. Should have thought a bit more about that speech. Alright, so what happens now? I'll talk to this fellow. Paul Clancy. Alright, this fellow's got a cap on, so he's obviously a bit of a douche. <laughs> I'm joking, guys, you know. Mm -hmm. Ah, so this guy has escaped. So, say, Clancy, was it? Do you know how I can get out of here? Why are there only two of here? How can I get out of here? Yep. This guy's so tough. His name is Lewis Stone. <laughs> Either that or he's a, you know, mad drug addict. But I doubt that, you know. These were more innocent times back in the 40s and 30s. You know, stuff like that didn't really happen as much. How do you know, O'Brien? Why are the two of you here? Why are the two of you here? I think I remember, actually. I think it's just a temporary camp. Yeah, it's a temporary holding camp before you get to actually get to Starlog Luff, so to speak. Cool, this game looks shite. I know graphics aren't everything, people, but this, this feels very bizarre after playing, you know, PS3 and PS, you know, PC games and stuff, you know. Playing Crisis this morning, playing Oblivion last night. I remember when Oblivion came out, that was a high-end game. But uh, it's nothing now. Okay, so that's that. What are some of the other controls? L1 to go into first-person view. Yeah, good. At least I can use some of my Call of Duty instincts there. And um, select, does nothing. Start is obviously start. And um, let's talk to that other fellow now. Hi, oh no, Captain. This is Jimmy O'Brien, and I'm the Irish fellow that Clancy was talking about. <laughs> oh, I don't know what it is with me. I'm doing it again. So for some reason, whenever I do an Irish accent, I get stuck doing my Irish accent. Gotta kind of snap myself out of the Irish accent. Hmm. Same for German. If I do a German accent, I'm stuck doing the German accent. Or oh, where is mine handy? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, people. I just do that. It's a terrible German accent. But where is mine handy? Must use my hand to phone my friend. Tell him about Herr Blobby. <laughs> hey, you know, Mr. Blobby. You know. Any of you Americans know about Mr. Blobby? I uh, didn't think so. Alright, he needs some currency from the sick bay. Okay. Here we go. It explains currency now. Yeah, currency is just anything that is valuable, you know, so things like wine, cigarettes, chocolate, you know, anything which I could get my hands on. Things like crowbars and stuff aren't, because they're just tools you use to escape, but just things like food and stuff, you know, they're regarded as currency. You know, I bet it's more like trading, really, but it just gives put a number on the training, really. Okay, so, uh, what now? So we've got the guards here, they're not very nice. See, he's so evil. What a bastard. But, um, yeah, he's, he probably wants to, you know, be where all the fighting is or be at a nice, proper place, not this stupid temporary holding camp. As you can see, down in the bottom left corner, you've got your compass, which has got kind of like a Metal Gear Solid theme thing, you know, with the field of view there. And, uh, you know, you can climb poles and stuff like that, I think. Can you climb poles? Well, I think you can, but I'm not going to now because that's really going to piss off the guards. we got... Barracks number two, that's where the other two stay. Look through Keo. Yep, this is where some of the others ones stay. There won't be anything interesting here, though. Oh, I nearly got locked in. And, uh, can you crouch and down and stuff under there? Yeah, you can crouch underneath and hide under these and stuff. You know, this stuff's just normal now, but 
back in the day, this was something special. Alright, let's time skip now. So, um, afternoon free time, morning exercise. Uh, it's afternoon free time. So, it is dinner next. Because I remember I've got to get some currency. How do I stand up properly? Stand up, you douche. It's like it's taking a fucking shit. There we go. Should be douche taking a shit right there. Uh, crap. What? Oh, here we go. Just as I was saying that it's time for dinner, let's go. Schnell! So evil! I am an evil freaking German. I'm so freaking evil. I've got freaking sharks with freaking lasers on their heads. Let's just see. Now it's dinner time. I can now break out of here. And um, I could just run past that barrier, but um, I'll get shot. And if you get shot, you don't die, but you get sent to the um, you get sent to the medical wing. And if you get captured, which you can do quite easily, if you run too close to a guard while they're chasing you, you'll just put your hands up and surrender. And uh, then you get sent to the cooler. Cooler Ives. Well, if your Bravos was the finest in all Germany, you wouldn't be serving it to three POWs, would you? You lying sod. Okay, I remember. The medical bay is over here, so I gotta climb over this wall. Oh shit, there's another guard on the other side of the wall. Get down, get down, get down. <laughs> well, that went well. Okay, uh. It's that freaking guard right there. Can you see him? Like, where is he? How the fuck do I look up? Oh, he's in the guard tower. Right, okay. Um, I'll break in this side where he's a little further away. So, jump over the wall. Yeah, get down, please. And drop. Sick bay compound, okay? So, I uh, look through keyhole. Anyone there? I can see the sparkle sparkle right there. So, that means there's currency in there. And, uh, let's pick up 30 currency, okay? So... Anything else of value? I don't know, there might be some guns or some pornography. No, there's some wine. Anything else? Uh, I think that's about it, really. There's 50 currency. Obviously, certain objects are... Oh, crap! Dinner time's over. Oh, no! Time goes very quickly in this game, but, you know, that's kind of a good thing. So, yeah, jump over. And jump down quick, 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 quick. I've got to get to the roll call. Holy shit! Cool, these controls are annoying. Alright. Oh, crap. They've locked me in. Shit. What do I do now? Oh. Never mind. Automatic wooden doors. Damn, this technology is advanced. Okay, so, um... Yeah. That's done now. Now I suppose I've got to find that guy who asked me to find the currency and give him the currency. And, um... Is he in here? Nope. Hmm. Really love, like, the idea of escaping from POW camp and stuff. Oh, there he is. How you been eating, Captain? That's grand. Actually, it's only 50 currency, so I'm afraid it's not grand. You're just a bit of a retard, really, aren't you? Yeah, you fucking fail. Oh, this is so dark. <laughs> Whips it out. No oh dear. I've always been a suede man. Oh, very funny. Very fucking funny, Lewis Stone. Bastard. Alright, so there we go. So now when I sneak around at night, because I can wake up at night and stuff and steal whatever kit I may need or complete, you know, complete objectives and stuff, putting that boot polish on my face gives me some kind of, you know, camouflage and stuff. Oh, well, that's good. So it means that if I get something really good confiscated, then I can pay him some money and then he'll get it back. That's good. All right. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. What have we got now? Fat German. This. Hey, hands off, Wolfgang. This. Hey, that's the guy who was in my plane with me. That guy threw up because he's such a retard. You know, how did earth did he get to be in the United States Air Force if he was that crap? I have no idea. Where is the United States Air Force, I suppose? It's not the far superior RAF. Ooh, satire. Satire. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. World War II, you know, yeah. RAF, they were, they were there. You know, they were hard men. Hey, buddy. Dear, oh dear. This voice acting is 
it, it's weird because the voice acting's not bad, you know, but since the facial animations and stuff are so... See, those two are quite clearly not looking at each other. <laughs> you know, it's just... It's, it's so out of place, you know, you've got this fairly good voice acting with this really bad character animation and stuff, you know. The goon squad shows up. Not those fucking cunts throw a rock at me. <laughs> yeah, we're all gonna escape. Whole stop off point. So yeah, the overall plan is to get onto a truck and then get snuck out, basically. Very easy, but it's not. Oh, this guy's an American. Hmm. Maybe there's only three Americans in the game then. Ah, right, so I've got to nick a crowbar. See, even they say it. If I can get my hands on a crowbar, then I can break through into the you know, truck compound and then hop on one of the trucks and then you know, get taken out, but I gotta get a key to the store. I see, that that's where the game comes in, you know. To get the crowbar, I've gotta get a key to get into the tool shed, but to get to the tool shed, I've gotta break into the German barracks. There we go, you know, and that's just how the game works and stuff, and then of course I've gotta to get to the truck. I remember getting to the truck was actually very hard. Well, you don't make a beautiful team, because you only got about five polygons in your entire face. <laughs> All right. Uh, tell you what, actually, is it auto saving? This game is auto save. Yeah, I think it. I just saw an auto save thing, but um. Is it, so I'm gonna go to my bunk and save it, and then gonna call the quits on this one. Cool. This game looks just fucking sucks. <laughs> That's PS2 for you. All right. So save the game and uh, BFB. Yep. Yeah, overwrite. Thank you very much. And uh, well done for coping with the graphics, I certainly have, and uh, yeah, this has been the first little playthrough on Prisoner of War, let me know how it went, do you want me guys to bring some more in this game, are you quite interested, you know, and um, I'll see you around, British fanboy, out.